moving more than 10% in terms of life satisfaction would normally be reserved for things such as gaining a job when you were unemployed or finding a partner in life. So for this course to do as well, if not even better, is really rather extraordinary. Not just from an academic perspective, the study is exciting, but also in a more societal, uh, more holistic framework where we see that economies have grown, especially in the developed world, um, that we see at the moment uh, employment being relatively high or low unemployment. And yet we see life satisfaction, people's well-being and mental health sort of stagnate. And if anything, we see negative emotions on the rise. So we see things such as anxiety and worry and stress actually go up, notwithstanding a relatively good economic backdrop. But what we've been lacking so far is essentially a strong intervention, something that really shows us how to truly raise well-being and do so sustainably in the field with actual people. And that's what makes this study so exciting. So typically, when people evaluate a, an intervention of some kind, what they'll do is simply taking a measure before the intervention and a measure after the intervention. But the problem with that is that there's lots of stuff that can happen in the space of, in this case, eight weeks. A Brexit, an election, something can happen. Now, the importance of what we've done is, and we've put a lot of effort in make, getting this right, is to do a randomized controlled trial. That is, we brought people in and then we randomized this group into a group that started that became the treatment group and then we, the other um, group was delayed and we're only starting the course eight weeks later. What happens to the two groups is obviously where it gets exciting. When they come in for the first time and get measured, uh, we find that they're a perfectly balanced measure of well-being. But the treatment group, they get to start. And what we find in the space of the next eight weeks, the length of the course, and they meet once a week, is that we find the, their life is satisfaction improving uh, week by week to end with about, well, over 10% higher in terms of their life satisfaction and other measures as compared to the control group who were measured at the beginning but do not benefit from the course. Now, as soon as they come back and the treatment group have finished, what you find is they then in turn also see an increase in life satisfaction. And, but the exciting thing, of course, is that we, from an academic perspective, is that we see the treatment group has maintained its level of life satisfaction. If anything, it has improved slightly even further. But that's not the only thing that we've measured. We've all also measured others, other aspects of happiness and well-being, such as worthwhileness, improving emotional well-being, in addition to life satisfaction. We see decreases in anxiousness. We see decreases in mental health uh, measures relating to depression and anxiety. And we see increases in pro-social habits and attitudes. So we see increases in compassion, in trust, and the notion of gratitude. And so one really important aspect of this course is that it brings people together and gives them a space to kind of open up and discuss what really matters to them. And if we've learned one thing over the past 20 years of the empirical science of well-being is that ultimately what matters is building social capital, is, is having social ties and linking to others. This is such a cost-effective way of increasing well-being and building communities and more people should participate, more investment in this should, should take place.